Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 2. Um, I'm going to show you textures. So we're just going to go ahead and make a new scene. And we're just going to simply put in a cube. And we're going to shade this. Now, your shader tools are always over here. Then you've got, if you want to receive and cast shadows as well. If it's visible, so if it's going to be invisible for one. Okay, I shouldn't go into that for now. And of course, you've got all your other options. You've got your shading option, which is pretty much here. And if you want to can get the another shader that's actually in your list, that's in in the universe. So if let's go see, I put the sphere in, and this was a different color. That's a different shader. It's called shader, and that's called default. And if I want the this to be red like that shader, I'll do this. Now here's another thing you could do if I wanted to have these two be red, but I want to change the cube about a bit. I would just click edit, and you can either edit the master, which will edit any object that that shader's on, or create a new master. The effect will be that object, and it creates a new shader. So it could be like that. I should that render, and oh, it's just like that. So let's go into a bit more detail about uh, shaders themselves and the your texture room here. There's hundreds of different variations you could make, and I'm going to show you terrain. In fact, no, I'll just show you multi-channel for now. Multi channels basically just you can have multiple layers of colouring. It's just uh, first of all we'll start with a colour. You can make it a colour gradient if you like. And let's just use those two colours. And uh, you've got your alpha which kinda makes it transparency a bit like. Then you've got your shininess. Sorry, don't I think that because of the color. So let's just make this, let's just make this a normal color. It's gonna be blue. We'll just make it blue. Here you see all your all the things in the shader itself. And you've got your highlight, and you got your shininess there. And you've got your reflection, which would be for like mirrors or a window with a slight reflection or whatever you want. And you've got glue which kind of affects it in a like that. You know, it's pretty self explanatory. Now you've got subsurface scattering, which is a bit like a noise diffusion. It spreads on the whole body of the shape. And then here you've got your bump, which will give depth to it, so if I wanted this to, excuse me, you know, look like any particular object. So here you can see you've got all your options for what you want this layer to be. If you want it to be a color bump, color gradient bump, which is obviously not going to really work. Texture map, if it's going to be an image or so. And you got operators, pan functions, macro functions, terrain distribution, etc. So let's just go ahead and put in a pattern, this function, and we're just going to put in brick. And you'll see how it affects it like that. And you've got different options on how many tiles you want. So if you want 40 horizontally and 40 vertically. And you'll see how it does that. If you, if you want 15 vertical and 5 vertical. And that's how it works like that. And you've got this little bar here that affects it. And you see how it affects that. And then let's just win the pattern functions again, you've got your caution which is you know, that caution type line. <coughs> you've got your checkered which is similar to the brick. And I'll show you one more which is tiles or even wires. You just put it in the list of how many you want. 
so that's how that's how bump works or if you want to use a noise function this is a quite an important one if you if you want to give it a bit of dirt effect to it you know you just going to want to kind of put in either a turbulence noise noise factory or so on then you've got different types of ways you want it to come out if you want to come out like checkers threshold spots lumber yard wood that would be just go ahead and keep it like that and you've got all your options here on however you want it to look let's change that to uh spots and that's how spots work and make that smaller and you see how it affects it just keep that value to three maybe you see it's smaller and then you've got your blending how much it's gonna like blend in if it's gonna be like really rough it's gonna be like that if it's gonna be quite smooth you know you're gonna go up somewhere in between maybe e3 like that let's take that bump off so there's loads of different ways you can just basically play around with the shaders and of course there's loads and loads more and that's that just a bit of a brief and I'll just quickly show you here another interesting one which would be flat mapping and of course there's other projection type map mappings where if you want to have one side a particular colour and stuff like that if you want to wrap around the whole object with just the one side of it so let's just say we want this to have a picture on it so we're just gonna uh, go down the texture map below the flat mapping bit we're just gonna go ahead and open a file and I'm just gonna open this this picture here as you can see it comes on on one side if you want to wrap around the whole object like that if you want it you know, I guess to appear on the ones excuse me the one side you know you do it like that and if you want it to tile you know, you've got your horizontal and vertical Eight going across and eight wide. You get the brightness of it, and that's basically how that works. It's no tile to it. And that's pretty simple to do there. Want to wrap around the whole object for your render. It's just like that. One more thing I'll show you before I go is terrain, and there's all different variations. It's gonna say this is a global shader. It's gonna be the main color of it on. It's gonna say it's gonna be brown, kind of black, for dirt really. Just use a gradient. And we're gonna add a terrain layer distribution. If you want, this is. This makes what the material is going to be. If it's going to be grass, you know, it's going to give you that grass effect. But of course, you need a shader on it. Let's say that shader is a green. And you see how it comes out there, and you've got different options of coverage, how much grass you really want in there. You can shuffle it about there if you wish. Now, let's we'll go ahead and add another layer. Let's make this layer land. And let's make this color sort of a dark brown and you see how it comes out there in fact let's make it snow just so you can get the idea of what else it's going to come out white uh, and you see how that works and that's good for if you're making a terrain of course up here you'll find your terrain be added in so that's just a brief and if you, uh, if you have any questions just comment and uh I'll get back to you as soon as I can and let you know. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 2.